All right, we're back. Um, I'm on problem number six. This is going to deal with price discrimination, which is another part of the monopoly um, discussion. If they can price discriminate, they will. What do we mean by that? The most simple example we talk about in class, for example, is elderly going to the movies. Right? Movie theaters can discriminate by age because you can identify an elderly as being 65 or 60, whatever your age cutoff is, and you can charge according to their age. Now, why would you do that? Well, because if you charge $15 to a movie, the elderly may not show up in the afternoon. But since they've got free time but not much income, if you charge $10 or $7 or $5 in the afternoon, you may get a lot of elderly. Depending on what your costs are, that may be a very good profit-maximizing position in order to discriminate. Okay? So this example is about price discrimination. And the moral of the story is going to be is that price discrimination, you're going to make more money if you can price discriminate. And if you can perfectly price discriminate, you can make the most. Now, what does perfectly price discriminate mean? That means that you charge everybody their willingness to pay. A little bit strange, a little bit extreme, of course, but everybody, use the, you're a salesperson at a store, you're at Best Buy, and you've got this device that when they walk through the door, you can read their minds. And you walk and watch them go to a television, and you can see, oh, I'm willing to pay $400 of that. Or you, can, you could see the price in their head. If there were no prices on everything, when they went to the cashier, you charged them what you thought they were willing to pay, and you knew what they were willing to pay, you could basically make a lot of money, of course. Extreme, but of course. But the point is, that's the limit. And we're going to find this very interesting result that, well, I'll come back to when we get to the result. All right? So let's start it. Number six, consider a profit maximized monopoly pricing under the following conditions. The price ma profit maximizing quantity is 40 units. The profit maximizing price is 160. And the marginal cost of the 40th unit is $120. If the good were produced in a perfectly competitive market, the equilibrium quantity would be $50, and the equilibrium price would be $150. The demand curve and the marginal cost curves are linear. What is the value of the deadweight loss created by the monopolist? Now, deadweight loss is the, one of the problems monopolist creates for us because they charge a price and produce at an output level that is lower than that would be produced and charged, well, lower output and higher price than would be charged in a perfectly competitive market. So in this problem, we're not using this diagram yet, it's one before that, but in number six, what they're telling you, they're giving you the following information. Let me write this down in red, all right? Now, profit maximizing, we're gonna put profit maximizing output, Q is equal to, um, it's, no, the profit maximizing output, well, I'll do this, the perfectly competitive market is producing 50 units and price is equal to 150, all right? That's that part of the question that talks about perfect competition. The monopolist, we'll put MO for monopolist, is charging a price, well, charging, producing 40 units and is um, charging a price of $160. All right, that's what they've given us. So under perfect competition, Q would be 50, P would be 150. Under monopoly, Q is 40, P is 160. Now, they, have, they tell you this. They say the marginal cost of the 40th unit is $120. So the marginal cost at Q is equal to 40 is equal to $120. All right. What's that going to look like? All right. So... If I could just draw a quick diagram above this, just to give you some sense. It's going to give you a little orientation to where this problem is going. It's going to look like this. All right? We have some demand curve like this. We have some marginal cost curve, and I'm going to make it like this. And we know that the price under perfect competition, right here, this would be Q, and this price would be 150, and this Q would be 50. Now they're telling you the monopolist is different. The monopolist is charging 160, producing 40 units, not 50. All right, and at the marginal cost of the 40th unit, this right here, this MC, the marginal cost of the 40th unit, not drawn to scale, is $120. So now you know this distance right here, you know this distance right here, and the question asks for you, what is the value of the deadweight loss of the monopolist? In other words, 
By deadweight loss, we mean that these transactions that I'm putting all these dots into, these transactions don't occur, right? This is the value of people's willingness to pay by the demand curve and the willingness of the marginal cost of producing it where people's willingness to pay exceeds the marginal cost, that is what we call welfare enhancing. In other words, that's a, that's a gain to both people, to both society and to the purchaser, that's a gain. All right, all those are lost because monopolists has cut back output and raised price in its own best interest, which is obviously to maximize profits. So these, the value of these transactions are lost. We call this the deadweight loss. Now we did this in class. People seem to get it pretty well. The question is now, what's the value of that deadweight loss? Well, we have to get the value of this triangle. And the area of a triangle, which we've done from some of our other parts, is one half the base times the altitude. So let's call the base right here 10. Let's call this altitude 160 minus 120 or 40. So now we have 120 times 10 units times $40, okay? And that's gonna be equal to five times 40 or is equal to $200, all right? So that should be our answer here. And the answer is $200 or C, all right? So the problem was a word problem. And the word problem forced you, I hope it forced you, to draw a diagram. And by drawing the diagram, it, the picture starts to emerge, all right? You see that monopolists, is the, the, perfect comp the perfectly competitive market would produce 50 units. They'd be at a price of 150. The monopolist is producing less, charging more, and that gives you the value of the lost transactions. And they get that little hit at the end that the demand and marginal cost curves um, are all linear. So I've drawn everything linearly. All right, and there's a marginal revenue curve in here that goes like this and hits right there. All right, so again, you didn't need all that or the diagram, but it's a way of forcing you to kind of use the words to create the diagram. We're not always going to give you the diagram, and it's again like another way to kind of test your understanding of this material. So that's problem number six. I'm going to erase this now. You can obviously go back and relook at it. It's in red, number six, and. The last four questions are going to use this diagram here, and so 15, 15 on your paper, let's start in on this, okay?